everybody, this is going to be a hopefully quick video on how to set up ASIO with OBS through Voice Meter Banana, as well as using your DAW. Um, so the first thing you got to do, of course, is download OBS Studio. If you don't have it, I'll send the link in the description. After you have that installed, the next thing you want installed is FL Studio. Once you install FL Studio, it's going to install a FL Studio ASIO driver, and we're going to be using that with an Ableton or whatever your DAW may be. Um, after you have that installed, you're going to install Voice Meter Banana. I'll also throw this link up in the description. Um, you're going to scroll down, download it on this left side here. Once you have that installed, it's going to ask you to restart your computer. Once you restart your computer, um, the final thing you're going to install is OBS ASIO. Um, again, links will be in the description for everything. Uh, when you go to this link here, you're going to click on releases in the middle. And then you're going to click on the latest plugin, which I think was released a few months ago. And then you'll scroll down and click on the installer down here. Cool. Once you have everything installed, you're going to go ahead and launch Voice Meter Banana first. So let's bring that up. So essentially, the first thing that's going to happen is there's going to be a flashing red text over here that's going to ask you to select whatever your audio interface is. For me, it's going to be the Universal Apollo Twin USB, so I just selected that. Um, after you select that, you're going to go to A1 right here, and you're also going to select the same interface that you just used over here. For A2 and A3, we're going to actually leave these alone. Nothing there. Um, for your microphone, how we're going to have that set up is we're going to go into menu, system settings, and we're going to patch ASIO inputs to strips. For me, since I have my mic plugged into input one on the back of my audio interface, you're going to select one, one. So how you select it, I mean, uh, by default, it's going to have a bunch of uh, dashes here, but you're going to left click in order to get a one in both areas and right click to erase. Um, if you left click again, it'll actually put it into number two. Uh, and that's if you have your mic plugged into the second input on your audio interface. After you have that finished, it should automatically set up this as your mic input. The, re the other two ones here, they're gonna be blank. Um, I, you could rename each thing if you need to. So I usually just right click, name something, press enter. Um, that way it could keep it more organized. For mic, I selected B1 and mono. So it's actually going to put it on B1 over here on this track here. And your main audio is going to be coming out of this area. After you have all that finished, you're going to go ahead and open your devices within your sound options within Windows. So you're going to open up that, go to playback, and make sure you set voice meter input as the default device. Um, by default, it actually has another device it installs, but I actually disabled that one. It's called uh, voice meter aux. And on the recording, it also has another voice meter aux output. Or I guess it has two, sorry has voice meter aux output and voice meter output. I've actually disabled both of these, um, so you don't need those. All you need is your main audio interface for playback and the voice meter input for playback. And for now, we're going to set this as default. Another thing you're going to want to do is you're going to double click into voice meter input within playback, and you're going to go to the advanced tab. Under exclusive mode, you're going to uncheck both of these, hit apply and OK. Uh, I read in a few comments on YouTube and I think a few forums that when you allow uh, this to take exclusive control, it sometimes doesn't allow other sound to come through. And so that might cause issues within your DAW to come through OBS properly. Once we have all that finished, go ahead and push OK, get out of here, and let's open up OBS. Within OBS, we're going to make sure... At the top right, you see the ASIO uh, menu bar. It's going to, I think when you first click on it, it's going to ask you to select which ASIO driver you want to use. Um, we're going to select Voice Meter Virtual ASIO. 
And once you select that, um, if settings don't pop up for you, go ahead and click on it again, go to settings, make sure that this is the only active device. Um, I've had it before where for some reason it selected FL Studio as also an active device and it wasn't working properly. So go ahead and make sure FL Studio ASIO and AUX are not selected on active. Just make sure virtual ASIO is active. Then of course you're gonna wanna set your sample rate to match the one within your system as well as OBS. So we'll check OBS in a second to make sure it's the same as 48. The buffer size doesn't matter too much. It's mostly the sample rate that you want to make sure is the same. So we'll go ahead and hop into settings and make sure the audio is set properly. So in here, the sample rate is also set up to 48. Um, you could select 44 if you want to do that for both. It's up to you. Everything else I have disabled aside from desktop audio device. For that, you set it as voice meter input VB audio voice meter VAIO. After you have that set up, it will actually pop up down here, or it should have before, but either way, your desktop audio is going to be down here, and you could actually go into properties, just make sure it's still selected as that. Next, we're going to add your mic and the Ableton audio. So for your mic, we're actually gonna click on the plus sign here in the sources and click ASIO input. For the ASIO input, uh, you're gonna have this screen pop up here. For device, you wanna select voice meter virtual ASIO. For OBS channel one, it's gonna be virtual ASIO zero VM VAIO one. Now, this is basically going to correspond with how we have it set up within Voice Meter Banana. Since we have it set up to route through one and one, that's where it's going to be playing from. And I think also since we set this to B1, and make sure your desktop audio is set to A1 here. So these are the two areas that you need to worry about. Um, I also renamed this to desktop, so that's why it says desktop. So make sure that's set to A1, make sure this is set to B1 and mono. After you have that set up, we're going to go ahead and add our Ableton audio. For Ableton, we're going to go here and add audio output capture. <clears throat> once that comes up, of course, I renamed mine to Ableton, but once it comes up, you're actually going to select your speakers, which are tied to your interface. For you, your interface might look different, but just select the other playback device, not the voice meter input, because we have that selected within OBS as our desktop audio. Um, since we're going to add another audio source, this is going to be our speakers. This is how we're going to have FL Studio ASIO work uh, with Ableton. After that, we're going to open Ableton. And we're going to go into Options, Preferences. Go to the Audio tab. Make sure the driver type is ASIO and the audio device is FL Studio SIO. Um, within here, you could click on hardware setup and you could choose two options. So if you don't wanna have three separate tracks like me, the reason why I do this is because it's easier to edit in post-production in any video editing program. That way I could lower the volume of Ableton if I need to compared to the desktop audio. But if you want everything just to come out of desktop audio, you could select output and do voice meter input um, for the voice meter VAIO. And I'll kind of show you what's gonna happen here in a second. So let me play something here first. So you'll notice once I select these speakers to come out of voice meter, the uh, Audio down here will shift to desktop audio. Changes here. So that's really your preference. Um, again, I like to have it on three separate tracks because it's easier to edit. Uh, Cause sometimes if I'm playing something, uh, you know, 
something on the desktop or just some random file on my computer. Um, if that's playing while Ableton is playing, then there's no way to kind of go back and forth between the two since they're tied to one track. The last core piece is streaming versus recording. Now, this is one thing I kind of had to figure out on my own, but it's definitely something that you need to understand. Within settings of OBS, if you go to output, there's going to be a streaming and recording tab. Now on the recording tab, you're gonna have different audio tracks you, you could select. I chose audio track one, two, and three, which I have routed to mic, desktop, and Ableton. That way, when this video actually renders out or exports, um, I could select three different audio tracks and manipulate the audio as I see you know, fit. For streaming, you don't have that option. You only have one audio track. So it's usually selected by default to one. Um, and let me show you how to actually switch between the two in order to get it to work properly if you're gonna stream. If you wanna stream and you select audio track one, you're gonna have to go back into here and go into advanced audio properties. Now, right now I have it set to three different tracks for each track. My mic input is selected to track one, Ableton is to track three, and desktop audio to track two. Now, if you want to stream, you're gonna have to select every single one of these boxes here for all ones. So you would have to select one for ASIO input, one for Ableton, and number one for desktop audio. And then if you go back to creating a YouTube tutorial, for instance, and you want them all separated, you're gonna have to go back and uncheck this. Now I tried to go in and create new scenes um, to kind of just switch back and forth so I don't have to manually do it every time, but it seems as though these advanced audio properties are a global setting, so it changes every scene. So I pretty much have to do that manually every time I stream versus create a YouTube tutorial. Um, the last thing I wanted to tell you guys is for slightly better quality from the mic, I actually have um, Audacity running separately because I noticed when the mic gets recorded through this ASIO um, input with an OBS, it doesn't really have that great of quality compared to if I was to record in Ableton, for instance, or Audacity even has better quality. So right now I'm actually recording separately through Audacity as well. And I'm gonna add this into the video later. Um, but in general, I noticed in my last videos, uh, when I use the audio coming from within OBS on my mic, the quality was like crackly at some points and it didn't sound that great. I don't know whatever, for whatever reason that may be, but I figured out that routing it separately through either Audacity or even if you want to use maybe your DAW separately, it comes out much cleaner. Um, all right, guys, that's pretty much it. Um, if I missed anything, let me know. If you have any questions, I'll try my best to answer them in the comments. Thanks.